everyone. Uh, we couldn't be more excited that you're here. My name is Scott Lang, and I am uh, just so excited to have you as a part of this event. Um, while it was put together on uh, just the last three days, the response has been absolutely overwhelming since we began this. This is our <laughs> webinar, Think Different, COVID Zero to COVID Hero. We are so excited that you're here. And before we begin, just a few housekeeping items. Uh, number one, we want to make sure that everybody mutes their, their microphones and turns off their cameras. This will allow everyone to focus on the presentation that's being shared and the information that we're about to give you. We also want to make sure that you open up your chat box. The chat box is, is a feature that allows you to converse with everyone else while the webinar is going on. It is a full room and it will be hard for us to manage and respond to all questions and queries, but we will at the end make time for those of you who want to share information or want to ask some questions of Tim and I. We also want to make sure that you're aware that this is being recorded and will be used for future use, and we hope to have this up on the web as early as later this afternoon for those who weren't able to make it into the room. To give you an idea, we had over 2,000 responses as of about two hours ago, and I'm sure it's well over 2,200 now, to be part of this webinar, and the room was maxed out at, um, at literally um, a, a thousand people. So we are over capacity, the room is full, and there are gonna be some disappointed people who couldn't be a part of the webinar. But again, we will be recording this and we will be sharing it on the web. And finally, we want to uh, encourage everyone right now to stop what you're doing and go to www.bpotm.org. That's be part of the music, bpotm.org. Org. And that will allow you to download today's slide deck and also get you set up to receive your professional development credit uh, for attending this webinar. Uh, so it's important that you go to bpotm.org. And uh, without further ado, uh, let's introduce the man of the hour. You are looking quite dapper today, Tim. I like the tie. I like the jacket. Say hi to everyone. Hi, everyone. And thanks for joining us. And thanks, Scott, for inviting me to be a part of this. Really appreciate it, my friend. Well, you know, Tim, if, if there's anybody who is the voice of reason and the voice of, of calmness, it's you. So, Tim, I've been in this business 30 years. You've been in it 30 years and a day, um, maybe a day or two more. Have you ever seen anything quite like this in your, in your experience in this profession? Absolutely not. I'm not sure anybody that's listening has either. You probably have to go back to the Depression when the market crashed to even get anything close to it even even uh 7 11 uh, the when you know september 1st 11th i i'm not even sure S september 11th 2001 yeah that's when the tragedy happened i'm not even sure that is in the same orbit as we are today well <clears throat> as someone who lived through that experience as most of our um, our attendees did. I tried to think back to that time too, and I would agree, I don't think it rivals what we're facing today. Um, and these are scary times, but we want you to know that there's a way out of this rabbit hole, and we want you to know that there is a place of hope and there is a ray of sunshine. So without further ado, we are going to begin our webinar. Um, again, as I begin the webinar, again, we want you to go to www.bpotm.org and download all the resources for today's webinar. That's www.bpotm.org bpotm.org. Think different going from COVID zero to COVID hero. Um, we want to thank our sponsors for being part of the music, not just for what they did today to help bring this on. We were able to buy more seats to the room. We originally only had 300 seats to the room, and within 15 minutes, we were at 500. So our sponsors stepped up to the plate to help make this possible. We want to thank all of our sponsors, Alfred, The Band App, JW Pepper, Music and Arts, Music for All, Smart Music, Van Dorn, World Projects, and all of the folks who helped make this a reality. So let's get right to it. That's what we're here for. That's what you're here for. I want to let you know what our purpose is. Um, first of all, there have been a, an incredible, incredible amount of resources placed on the web in the past um, 96 hours. And all of the people doing incredible work and well-intentioned, whether it's from NAM, whether it's from NAFME, whether it's from some of our instrument manufacturing partners, they have done incredible work and we applaud them. And we hope that we can be one small voice um, in this process and maybe provide just a little bit different perspective 
uh, on what it is. And as I said to Tim, when we chatted about this on Monday, we want this to be tactical and practical. We want to provide real solutions to real problems in real time. So our goal, frankly, is to provide a framework of thinking that helps you build an instructional framework for your students, your school, and your situation. Now, no one can tell you how to teach. And I think, Tim, you would agree that everyone's situation is different, that teaching elementary general music is different than high school orchestra, and middle school choir is different than high school band, and a rural community without broadband is going to deal with this situation differently than an urban community with a one-to-one -one laptop ratio. We're not here to tell you how to teach, and we would never presume to do that because only you know your students, only you know what's best for them, and only you know what your skills and capabilities are. But what we want to do is help you to think about the problem a little bit differently. And with that, I'm going to share this. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them. Because they change things. They push the human race forward. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. That was the Think Different campaign by Steve Jobs and the Apple Company. They created that, came, uh, that created that campaign in the midst of turmoil as Steve Jobs returned to the company in 1997 when the company was just six weeks away from bankruptcy six weeks away from bankruptcy. And now that company is the number one market cap, cap company in the world today alongside Exxon and Microsoft. And when he came back aboard the ship that was sinking, his message to the company was quite simply this. Think, let's not try and do what other people do. Let's not try and be like other people and let's not repeat the mistakes we have. And let's try and think different. And as I watched that, it, it really inspired me to think about this new paradigm that we're facing over the next two weeks, three weeks, two months, that we are able to understand that we are in uncharted territories and we are best served not by thinking like we did in the past, but maybe thinking differently in the future. And I hope that kind of helps you think through some of the things that you're facing. So while Steve Jobs shares think different, what Tim and I want to share with you is teach different. We are still teachers at heart. We went to school and we made this our life's work because we wanted to teach. And this is perhaps maybe the greatest opportunity to teach in our lifetime. And I mean that sincerely. No one went to school to think about teaching by rote. No one went to get a music degree to think about teaching the way other people taught. No one went and got, um, uh, went through the trial and tribulations to become a teacher to merely do what had been done before. We all have a unique voice. We all have a unique vision. We all teach in a unique place and have to teach in a unique way. And I will tell you, when I look at this, I don't get upset. I get fired up. Like, what can we do that's never been thought of before? How can we teach in a way that's never been conceived? How can we reach children in a way that's never been done before? How can we use this medium in a way that's never been attempted? This is why we got degrees, people. This is why we went out and decided we wanted to teach. So let's teach. This may be the greatest opportunity ever, time and time again. I hear, well, if I didn't have a festival or goodness, it's that concert that I have, or the judges want me to play this literature. And well, if I don't get a superior, all of those are gone. For the next seven weeks, all of those constraints are gone. And we are freed from the shackles of the eight to five school day. We are freed from the shackles of contesting and, and competitions. We are freed from the shackles of required literature. We're freed from the shackles of parental pressures. This is a brave new world, and it's time to think 
different. So Tim and I uh, spent some time in the last couple of days getting together and we don't wanna just talk in hyperbole. Um, we wanna talk in real solutions to real problems. So first things first, um, what, do you, what are we trying to teach? Why are we trying to teach it? How are we gonna teach it? And how do we measure success? So when you think back to this, uh, when we stand in front of a group every day, and I don't know how you feel about this, Tim, um, I always had a lesson plan uh, walking in the room, which rarely lasted more than five minutes. I don't know if yours was any better, <laughs> but I by and large got to teach whatever I wanted to teach. My administrator didn't have a music degree and he rarely or she rarely could assess what was truly happening in the classroom. And so I was reliant upon festivals and concerts and things nine and 10 weeks away to determine whether I had done my job on a Tuesday or Wednesday. But knowing that I had a certain freedom on the podium and I had a certain freedom with my curriculum of me to teach what I wanted to teach. So with that freedom, now it's even more free. And, and we have to ask ourselves, in this new paradigm, what do we want to teach kids? How are we going to do it? Why are we doing it? And how do we measure success? Tim, I don't know, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I think it all comes back to communication. I mean, if that's the foundation for all of this. We need to communicate with each other. And as you said, Scott, there, there are people who don't have access to Wi-Fi and so forth. So we got to come up with creative ways. But the highway, regardless, all of these other things, the highway has to be communication. If that's not there, we're kidding ourselves. So remember, folks. So that's where I would start. What we're trying to do, and, and sage words for sure, um, and you know, I like you. I like you when things went crazy. My first call was to Tim. And I know my phone call is blowing up, so I know that yours is absolutely exploding. But Tim and I, the one thing we were adamant about when we did this is we don't want to tell you what to do. What we want to do is provide you with some tools to determine what, how you want to build it. We want to give you a saw and a hammer and some nails and some wood and some glue. And whether you want to build a dog house or an addition to your house, that's up to you. We want you to do what you do best by letting us do what we do best, which is share resources. So we know that we need to think differently. Step number one, step one, and there's gonna be five steps to today's webinar. Step number one is in everything you do, you wanna think like a student. Now, I'm not one who wants to read to people, so I'm gonna just give you about 30 seconds to read uh, what's on the screen right now from the perspective of a student. So, Tim, what jumps out at you on this screen? Uh, what's the most important thing you would want to share with us? Um, I'm, I'm still going to come back to the same thing. There's got to be a reason that we, when we communicate, for those people to communicate back. Uh, it would be so easy, as we're doing right now, to just talk at them or throw information at them. There has to be an ask, a participation, something where they are part of the teaching process. That so I'm going to be personal here. Um, you know, I, I have a son and two sons who are involved in music. And, you know, that, that organization, that for me, band organization, is the face of my son's high school. Um, mm -hmm. They are the one that communicates with me. And since the, um, the crisis has broken out, I have heard uh, from my school with links and hyperlinks and legal official jargon. But what I haven't heard from is, is my friend. You are the face of the school for most parents. You are the one that makes them feel calm and you are the one that turns to them. And I get communication regularly from my band director, but only irregularly from my school. So what I'm looking for is for that voice of calm. And, and remembering, and I've always believed this, that fear is more important than knowledge. Sharing information with me doesn't do anything for me unless you lower the fear first. And you know, my school district, and they're a very fine school district, are sharing a bunch of hyperlinks, lots of information, but we have shut down because we're scared. In your communication, it's important for you to remind them that you are the captain of the ship and that everything's going to be okay and that when things go right, you're gonna be there to help guide them right. And when things go left, um, that you're gonna be there to guide them left. So as you communicate, as Tim so eloquently put, you do so not just sharing information, 
but lowering fears. And this can be done via text, via remind, via email. It can be done with your student leaders, but communicate and connect regularly, not just with information, but to lower fears for your students and for your parents. Again, we're gonna share this now. These are some thoughts and ideas about how you build a, a curriculum online that's both meaningful and manageable. So I'm gonna let you take a minute and read through this and look for Tim's feedback. Tim, thoughts. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the whole thing premise, and you've done a great job with this, Scott, is um, choose to understand before being understood. And we're going back to think like a student. Why would the person connect? What are the benefits? What's in it for me? And if everything's framed like that, then they're in the game. But again, if we're just shoving information, what not be the easiest time in the world not to pay attention. So well, again, we have to get behind the eyes of the students. What's going to bring them into this band room or choir room or orchestra room that we're creating virtually? So we're going to share a bunch of uh, ideas and thoughts about what things you can do uh, that would be both meaningful and manageable for you. But before I do that, I want to emphasize the last point, which is whatever you do represents who you are and what you believe and what you value. If you send home a music only assignment, then what it says is I only care about the musician. If you send home only an assignment related to curricula or scope and sequence or performance objective, what it says is um, I'm only concerned about my curricula, my scope and my sequence and the performance. So when you send something home, make sure that it brings value, not just to that child, but brings value to that family makes their world a little bit easier to manage or provides them a little bit of structured time with their child or even perhaps makes their world at home a little bit less chaotic that everything you do represents who you are and you know tim and i we were kind of laughing it's easy to say we're a family when you're getting superiors with distinction in the fall and sweepstakes award but this is where the rubber hits the road are you talking about family now are you talking about building a bridge and supporting one another now? So when we show you some of our, our assignments, um, some of them are a little bit off the wall, some of them are a little bit fun, but all of them are intended to make, both make their life easier and make yours more manageable while still delivering meaning and curricula. Keep in mind, as you do this, these are the things that kids have lost. Like there's a lot of sadness in this world right now. There's a lot of sadness in my own house. There's a lot of sadness out in the streets. And it's important to acknowledge that for the students so that when we give them assignments, that maybe our assignments have just a little bit of joy. When you do this, when you communicate, understand, understand that your job is to tell them, I acknowledge your pain. I acknowledge it. I know you've lost graduation. I know our concert has been canceled. I know the trip's gone. I know you're concerned about graduation and more. I know that all states been canceled. Acknowledge their pain and provide a plan. That's number one. Acknowledge their pain and provide a plan. It doesn't mean you have every detail worked out. It just says, hey guys, I'm working on our final concert. We think we're gonna bring back the seniors in the fall. Hey guys, I know the trip is concerning to you, but we're gonna take that money. We're gonna make an even better experience next time around. Listen, I know we haven't had leadership auditions or senior awards, but I guarantee you, we're gonna find a way to reconnect and recommunicate. We will celebrate you. We will provide those experiences. Reassure them, acknowledge their pain and reassure them that you have a plan. So think like a teacher. Take a minute and read these. And we are gonna share our assignments with you in the next slide. I jumped ahead and I apologize there. Tim, which one jumps out to you? Um, be creative and I would stop right there <laughs> after the first one. Um, because what you said before, uh, Scott, was, was so important that we have to acknowledge their hurt, what they don't have, but we need to replace it with something. Because when people don't have anything, they tend to put in negative information. So I don't have graduation. Now, if we stop there, 
right? Then, oh, my, it feels bad. However, what we're going to put in place of that is, and we, that's where we have to be creative. And we're going to share those ideas with you right now. You know, the one thing I will say, I was sitting with a parent last night, a friend of mine, who was very concerned about things and, and school might be called off in this. And I, I looked at him, I said, let's remember, and I pointed to my 10 year old son, I said, he's gonna be 50 one day, he's gonna have four kids and a couple of grandkids and a job and a career, and he's gonna be okay. That we can't obsess over the moment. The question is, when he's 50, what will he remember about what I did in this moment as his teacher of music of, of this important life lesson. So here's some crazy ideas. We encourage you to jump in the chat room and, um, and share some of your own ideas. And, but we're gonna leave these with you. And then uh, Tim, you had a favorite on here that I, I want you to share with the group. So take a moment and read these. And I'm gonna move on to the next slide, which has some other ideas. And I think it's your favorites on the other slide, Tim. Uh, but before I do that, remember bpotm.org, you can download this slide deck. You don't need to memorize these ideas. And the slide deck also has plates, places for you to write notes. Tim, what was your favorite on the list? Okay, what you say your favorite. Let's see, let's see how close we hit. My, my favorite was, and I don't know why, was um, uh, send them a recipe and a musical pairing. So send out recipes for tacos and include a recording of Adrian Reed's La Fiesta Mexicana, or send out something for Irish stew and send out Four Scottish Dances by Malcolm Al Arnold. So that you're providing an hour long activity with the family to cook and, and do something, but you're also providing some musical structure. I don't know why that was where my mind went. Where was yours? Well, the important thing is, I mean, I, I can like all of these, I, you know, and you know the one I like, but the important thing is it, it it asks for action. It gives them road signs rather than just practice a lot. You know, you have a lot of time to practice. <laughs> That's like read the dictionary because you're going to need those words. So uh, you've really done a great job, Scott, putting together uh, all of these. Uh, I like music-based would you rather questions because that's the first question that comes up in everybody's mind, even when they pick a piece of music out of the folder, right? We know. play, our family and I play Would You Rather every single night of the week. We have a book we keep by the dinner table. And some of them are just flat out disgusting, but they are hilarious. And uh, those who've been uh, in my workshops, I use Would You Rather as icebreakers to get uh, people to talk to one another all the time. Tim's favorite, uh, he doesn't want to be biased. His favorite was um, email a famous star and tell them why you admire them. So Tim, I'm going to put you on the spot. Who would you email? If you had to email someone, um, any genre, any age, any icon, if you had to email someone, who would you email? Mozart. <laughs> okay, he has to be alive, okay? Ah, the the chances of responding are not good. I, if it were a few years back, it would be Oscar Peterson, who I thought was a genius. Because I know he didn't practice. He just, it just fell out of his hands. And I would love to know how his mind worked like that. Yeah. So, and you know, you never know, <clears throat> they might just reach back. So that was <clears throat> Tim's favorite yesterday we were giggling about. Um, but there's so much more that you can do than that. Chef. So step, uh, step one is, is think like a student. And now we're talking about thinking like a program director. Now that you've thought like a student, step one. Step two, think like a teacher. Create meaningful but manageable online experiences that don't necessarily have to be Man, music performance related, just music related. We all say that teaching music is about more than the, the notes and now's the time for us to prove it. But let's remember, and, and I say this with genuine respect, we're all getting a paycheck and we're all expected to rise up and do our jobs. And part of our job is to be a program director. 
And I will tell you is, as we share these next two units of think like a program director and the next one, um, which is, uh, I won't, I'll save it for then, um, is that this is an opportunity for you to really lead your peer teachers, to show them that even in times of crisis, you're more than just a choir director, band director, orchestra director. You teach more than general music and wander from classroom to classroom, that you're a school wide leader. So as you do this, um, I want you to start thinking like a program director and I want you to think through these following things. So please understand, and, and Tim, I'm going to ask you if you have any additional thoughts on these or what's on the next screen, but uh, we're not suggesting that you have every detail thought out and every plan in place, but I think it's important to plan and prepare now for what's coming at us so that when um, the kids do come back, we can say we've had every instrument uh, swabbed and cleaned and disinfected. We're now setting the ensemble four feet apart versus three feet apart. Um, we've taken care of scrubbing down all the percussion equipment and we have wipes in the back of the room for them to do it after every class. We've limited stand sharing, whatever those things are. And not only is that critically important for your students' health and safety and your health and safety, but it says to everyone around you, parents, students, and administrators, I've thought this through, I'm in control, I've got this, worry about something bigger. Tim, your thoughts. Um, again, great, great ideas. I think the thing you just said, Scott, was so important. It always, the why has to be connected with it. Are we just filling up time here by wiping down the instruments or is, Here's the why, and the why always has to have benefits to them because it would be easy just to fill up stuff. We can make up all kinds of stuff, but to a 14, 15, 16 year old, 11, 12, 13, it, the why, this is why we're doing it, and this is how you're going to benefit from it so they can, they can get those rewards back. They can draw on that bank account. It's so important, Tim, is because we, we forget that we're dealing with an eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15 year old child. And uh, I, I would like them to be more uh, less, less self-centered and more uh, philanthropic, but in reality uh, that their mind doesn't operate that way. And it's about the I me at this point, especially as the kids are younger. So, and again, students can help you, student leaders, this is a great leadership opportunity. Here's some other things I want you to think about. Cute. So this is more about the, how do we close down the year? How do we prepare for the start of next year? And so once we get past the here and now, uh, if the students are coming back tomorrow, the next day or not, or assignments for tomorrow, next week and the week after that or not, um, that what are we doing to plan for next August? Uh, from an instructional standpoint, from a curricular standpoint, from a student standpoint, and from a financial standpoint, what are the, what are the impacts of this? Um, it, no more sharing of instruments. We'll need a budget for more instruments. No more sharing of mallets. We'll need more mallets. Um, uh, that maybe the spring trip is gonna be canceled and we'll apply those funds elsewhere. Maybe the band fee has to be lowered for next year or the orchestra trip has to be curtailed by a day or two. But starting to think long-term after you've been through the short-term, how do we close down this year if in fact it's over but then how do we start up next year in a way that we're not only hitting the ground running, but we've addressed all the issues and needs associated with the premature closing, but then we've also thought through the ramifications of what that means and instructionally and financially and curricularly so that we can close that gap of the missing nine weeks as quick as humanly possible. Anything on here, jump at you like, oh, I hadn't thought about that or you'd really want someone to hone in on Tim? I mean, they're all great. If for those teachers, uh, Scott, that can't get back in the schools where they've been quarantined out of the schools, um, you have to shift that so that the students get buy-in on however you adapted that to fit outside the school. And you can do all of them that way, you know, unless you break in and get the percussion stuff out, which is a possibility for all of us. Well Notice it was Tim the drummer whose mind went to, I can break in and get things out of the room. So all of you who think he's Saint Tim, 
realize that there is a percussionist underneath there and a possible felon. Okay, let's be clear about that. And we recorded this. Thing just yeah, but clear. it would make the band better, right? So, um, you know, and, and, and I'll share this with you just as, as we're processing through that. This is a great time to teach leadership, not just to your leaders, but to all students, to give them a responsibility to connect with someone else or do something else or help someone learn something else. So that, you know, they say to teach is to learn twice, that your students are not only learning what you're teaching, but they're connecting with someone else and learning by teaching them. Some final thoughts is okay. one more important thing. Yeah. This is an opportunity for all of us to give ownership to the students to do things that sometimes we do that they could do. And, and you know, uh, when the tide goes up, all boats rise. You know, then it becomes their choir. It becomes their orchestra. And there's not a better time to do it now because you need them and they need you. So and this is a win-win-win on this one. And when they come back, the new norm will be they do more and you do less. So yeah. you couldn't be more true. To, I'm reaching out to the right as if you were to the right of me. That's just weird. But you're on my screen to the right. So you're to the right of me, Tim. Um, so recruitment and retention. And Tim and I, man, boy, we pounded on this yesterday. Is that this is the gift that either keeps on giving or this is the punishment that keeps on punishing. And that so... Reflecting back to 2008, you know, I, I turned to my wife and I, I shared with her back then, I said, boy, if you own a restaurant, you're in some deep trouble. But if you can survive the next 18 months, you'll be wealthy beyond your wildest dreams because everyone will return to normal and all their restaurants will be gone and they will come to yours. And I, I felt the same way about music. And I said back then, if music education in the next eight years doesn't grab every single child, it is our own fault. This is a renaissance moment for us because it's entirely possible, and I don't wish this upon anyone, when we return to normal, uh, that yearbook might be gone. When we return to normal, Pottery Club might be gone. When we return to normal, some sports might be gone. When we return to normal, um, Poetry Slam Club might be gone. And we will have a generation of kids with nothing to do, looking for something to do it. And let's be clear, with the possible unemployment and economic crisis looming, their parents will be doing the jobs that they once did. We have a generational moment here to grow our programs. And we have a generation of kids who are gonna be looking for something. And if we don't reach out and grab them, it's our own fault. Recruitment and retention, and you all know it's a passion of mine, should run to the front of your to-do list to make sure that every child that you thought was supposed to be enrolled for next year is in fact enrolled. And every child that isn't, that you reach out to personally. What else do you have to do at this point in time? So I want you to look through this list and really focus on, because some of you folks have registered your kids and you just need to verify. Some of you left school and your students aren't registered for next year. And that could be a make or break program moment for you. So take a moment and look at this list. Folks, and selfishly speaking, we have all the resources you need to be part of the music. And our sponsors have been incredibly generous to provide those for you free of charge. Everything you need from social media to videos, to sign-up sheets, to Google Docs, to websites. And if you don't use our materials, use your own. But please, recruit, 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 retain, retain, retain. There are a generation, a generation of kids who are gonna be lost, lonely, and looking for something. And if we don't grab them, then by gosh darn it, it's our own fault. Set in place a systemic and organized plan to confer with every current student and verify and ask them to reach out and find new students, but then also connect and communicate with incoming students on a regular, if not obnoxious level to remind them that you're waiting for them you're excited about them and that their high school experience isn't gonna change because of this moment. Any other thoughts on this, Tim? Well, I mean, I've, for so many of those students, the reason they're there is for the culture. They get to go to the band hall or they get to go in the choir room. And in every kind of marketing, what they do is create the picture of what the person wants. You know, they make it, the, 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 the people who are doing the hair thing, those people have lots of hair. 
they already. So I think we have to keep coming back to saying, you're there, there's culture, your family's there, we're there. We're just not connected right now this way, but we're going to connect this way because we're all still there. We're all still the family. You know, and the perspective as you say that, Tim, is, you know, uh, think about the folks who are in the military and they've been overseas for a year. And, you know, you understand that the struggles that they've been facing for the last decade and realizing that even halfway across the world, we're in a millennium in which that doesn't mean we can't connect, whether it's Zoom, whether it's texting, whether it's FaceTime, whether it's email, that we have opportunities that, that even 20 years ago were unthinkable. Yeah. Now, a special time of the day to come to the band room. <laughs> right? it is, it'll be the, it'll be the quietest time. Say again? I said, it'll be the quietest time you ever spent in the band room. <laughs> You'll be wishing for the drummers to return yeah. in the next two days. And Tim will be, you know, in a vent hook above the, you know, the third platform, still trying to break in and get the mallets. Cause I'm there. I'm there. Um, so as you, as you're thinking like a pro, pro program director, I want you to start thinking and planning for next year and not just in terms of band camp, but in terms of your orchestra, how does this impact literature selection? How does this impact leadership? How does this impact your class size? You know, if you've been looking for that extra section and you could walk into your ministry and saying, 80 kids in my orchestra isn't healthy in this time of COVID. They need to be broken down to 40. Um, it's, we, it's not reasonable for us to rehearse in a facility that small anymore. We need help with uh, a plan for a new facility. It's not reasonable to put four kids in a bunk space at camp next year. We need to break that out to two or three or those sorts of things. So I'm gonna leave a minute just to think about this and dream forward. And the reason this is the last slide in terms of think like a program director is this is not the first thing first, but something you want to be aware of. So for me, the one that jumps out is the last one, which is, uh, are you communicating with your boosters? They're just as invested in this experience as you are. And to be honest with you, emotionally, maybe even more. Yeah. Because it's not their job, it's their kid. It's their, their senior's final performance that's gone. It's their, it's their award, it's the Allstate that they worked so hard for. But um, are you talking to your parents and your boosters? And again, communicating, I acknowledge your pain, I have a plan for the future. Join me. Thoughts, Tim? Um, you're, you can be the lightning rod. You can be the lightning rod of um, positive future. Um, negative gets so much attention. And, and boy, have we got excuses to be upset and negative right now. That's all the more reason we have to open up this place for the students and the parents to say, no, no, let's lock arms. We're going to get this one nailed. We just need everybody pulling the harness together. It's going to be fun. We're all going to be winners. See, when he says that, it just makes me smile. It, it just, it's going to be fun and we're going to make it. And if that has that impact on me, like imagine the impact that's going to have on a 14 year old or on their parent who's wondering what's next to my 14 year old. The, the only thing we have, Scott, is time. <laughs> and you can either use it negatively or positively. You can worry or you can start to solve right away, but you can't get that time back. And that's, and we have time right now. We've got some time so we can get to those parents and we can start those, can build those bridges and the highways going both ah. ways. A lot of, a lot of great possibilities here. And you nail most of them. Yeah. And all of the teachers were always saying, I wish I had more time. Well, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> You've got it. You're right. Step four, um, think like an administrator. Uh, I think this is worth thinking about, and uh, it's not just because I was one, but I think it's important for you to remember, you don't, you're not the band director at Smith High School. You're a member of the Smith High School faculty, and you're a member of the Smith High School community. Um, and you need to be a part of the solution, not just for band, choir, or orchestra, but you need to be a part of the solution for the whole school. So I, I want to give you a minute just to read and reflect on these. But where are they? What happened to them? Tim, which one jumps out at you? They all do. Let, let me just share this, because a lot of times with administrators, we will communicate and will not get anything back, and we take that as a disappointment. It's like when somebody says, I love you, you expect I love you back. 
And we've got to be satisfied with outgoing communication without the expectations of getting anything back. We have to plant the seeds, all right, instead of eat the apples. You know, um, I was administrator for a year and I, I thought I was prepared for it. And I was technically. What I wasn't prepared for was the onslaught of negativity that the parents are upset because you disciplined their kid and the student's upset because you disciplined him and the teacher's upset because you didn't discipline enough. And I call that little red blinking light that was messages, my nemesis, because I knew that every time it went red, that someone was about to yell at me. And so if you can take a moment and give a hug or an elbow bump to maintain appropriate distance or send an email just saying, hang in there, or more than anything, what can I do to help? That's what we would tell our student leaders. That's what we need to tell our leaders. What can I do to help? You're doing a great job. I got your back. I'm on your side and I'm here to help. You need me to walk the hallways and keep the campus clear? I'm on it. You need me to send an email? I'm on it. You need me to man the phones? I'm on it. You need me to clean my band room? I'm on it. Whatever you need, I am here and I am on your side. We're measured by what we give. And here's an opportunity to give so much for those administrators to know that, that we're there for them, that we're not gonna be the ones screaming at them, which most people will do. No, they need us. Let's be their best friend right now. Well, and, and if I can even throw it out there, you know, I, I spoke to um, a friend of mine who runs a music travel business. And they said, the phone has been lighting up and no one's being nice. They're just screaming. Where's my money? Where's my trip? And she said, I'm not a thief. I'm working 20 hours a day trying to solve this problem and do what's right for kids. But all she's getting is screaming. And that there are people out there hurting like you, your music ed rep, your local music store, um, the sponsors who sponsor this podcast, they're hurting. They're scared just like you are. So, you know, as Tim would say, uh, you, you said it to me 15 years ago, I'll never forget it. If you have the opportunity to choose to be right or choose to be kind, choose, choose kind. kind. And that's from you, Tim. <laughs> Probably stole it from somebody. Well, but, but it's true. This, we, we really need to get mortar between the bricks. And that's us. That's the human part. So step five is we have to remember that we got to think like a parent that they're sitting at home and not knowing what to teach their kid. Heck, my wife's a teacher. She taught for 20 years. I'm a teacher, I taught for 16. And I'm looking at my 10 year old going, I don't know what to do with you. I, 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 what do I, and I'm a teacher. And, or as my son likes to remind me, I wasn't a real teacher, I was a music teacher, um, which we had a long chat after that moment. But you have to remember that the parents are scared and frustrated. Uh, I've been locked in my house uh, with my kids for 17 days. And I would say last, yesterday hit the boiling point. They're on their nerves, they're on my nerves, I'm on their nerves. Um, and we gotta think like a parent for just a moment. So I'm gonna give you a moment to read these. And just a friendly reminder, if you're doing your dishes or have your microphone on to make sure to turn your microphone off. Um, during this time so that everyone can focus on the content. So remember, the parents have lost something as well. They've lost the opportunity perhaps to see their child walk across the stage and get a diploma. They've lost the opportunity to see their child perform for the last time. They've lost the opportunity to see their son solo with the jazz ensemble. They've lost the opportunity to audition or make all region choir or all state choir. That they're scared, they're frustrated, they're confused on what to do, and they're also hurt. And I can tell you, I'm getting lots of legal ease emails from my, my district, and they're not doing anything to lower the fear. They're not doing anything to remind me that it's going to be okay and that the district's going to figure this out. And going back to where we started, which is they won't hear what you say until you lower the fear. That fear is more powerful than knowledge. And before you teach or communicate everything, you have to start with, it's going to be okay. 
We're going to get together. As Tim made me smile and saying, we're going to have some fun doing it. It's going to be okay. Now my barriers and my defenses are down and I'm ready to learn from And last but not least, this. Sorry, that turned off. Here's the thing. When someone signs up for band, choir, orchestra in first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, they didn't know that this is the day they were signing up for. They thought they were signing up for the Friday night halftime show and the Allstate Orchestra and the, the chamber choir and the school musical. That's what they thought they were get, signing up for. But the unintended consequence, the unintended benefit, the unintended value is this is what they signed up for. That in times of greatest crisis are the times that our leadership is tested and that this is where you can have the impact at the most deepest and profound level if you're willing to take a step back and revisit what do I want to teach? How do I want to teach it? What way am I going to teach it? And how am I going to measure it? When you can answer those things, you are going to have a profound impact and you will have seized on an opportunity that may never come again in your professional lifetime. I hope it doesn't. I genuinely pray and hope that I don't ever have this opportunity again. I hope I never have to have a webinar where there's a thousand people in the room and a thousand people waiting to get in. I hope I never have to reach out to Tim and say, Tim, let's jump in together and, and try and help. Um, I don't relish this moment and I don't think you do either but I know you're not gonna shy away from it. Tim, some final thoughts? Well, first of all, the people that are on this, the, the thousand that did get in, they're already at the front of the pack. That's why you're here. You know, it's, we're, we're preaching to the choir in a, in a sense. I, I wanna go back to what Scott, the, the parent thing, Scott, for just a second. Hey. Because many of you are parents. Scott, you know, he's got his two boys. Unless the person's pathological, the most important thing in a parent's life is their child. And you've got a chance to help that child in countless ways right now because they don't have all the other things. And, and I, not to be disparaging, but if there's one teacher in that school that can really put their arms around this, it's a music teacher because they spend more time with you than many of them do with their own parents. So here's an opportunity. And Scott, thanks for inviting me to be a part of this and all my friends out there, you know, Let's, let's do this together. We can do it. We'll make it. You know, Tim says expecting and giving without expecting anything in return. I think I can speak for everyone and say, we love you, Tim. Um, what you've done for this profession and for all of us personally uh, speaks volumes. Uh, and, and I always say I, when I'm on the road, I've never met someone who didn't think they were your best friend. And that's a gift that you have that is truly something special and different than others. And to all our viewers, remember that, uh, this is an opportunity for you to do what you were trained to do. And uh, you should relish it and you should find some joy in it and you should be energized by it because we may never have this opportunity again <laughs> we're doing today. Just keep in mind, think like a teacher, think like a student, think like a program director, think like an administrator, think like a parent, but more than anything, think different. Just think different different. So we want to thank everyone for attending today. Uh, we want to thank our sponsors. Again, these are folks who are facing obstacles that are even more considerable than ours. And I know, Tim, uh, your industry partners are, are, are concerned in, in dealing with this, but uh, the folks we have at World Projects, Van Doren, Smart Music, Music for All, Music and Arts, J.W. Pepper, Band, Alfred, and new partners, Port 403 in my music class, and uh, Connolly Strings. Um, we want to thank you for helping us provide this to you. We hope that it's been tactical and practical. We hope that we've provided real solutions uh, to real problems in real time. You can get all of these resources and your professional development certificate at www.bpotm.org. That's www.bpotm, be part of the music, bpotm.org.
or you can download the slide deck with space for notes. Um, you'll have all the information. And then later today, for folks who do all that, you will get a professional development certificate to show your administration team that you've been professional and prepared, and you have become a better teacher through all of this. Now, this concludes the formal part of our webinar, and, and um, Tim, go. If, you, if I can do something to help, you know all you have to do is get to me. You can Google it and track me down, but there is no cast order in this. We're, we're at ground zero with you on this. So use and abuse us. How's that? Yeah, absolutely, Tim. And um, so with that, we're gonna terminate the formal part of this, but we're gonna open it up to questions. So what I'm gonna do is uh, thank everyone who's joining us both via watching online and thank everyone who is um, going to watch this as a video later on this afternoon and beyond. And please, when you get the link, share this with all your friends and colleagues and let us know if there's something we didn't cover or should have covered or how we can help. And you know how to reach me, Scott at scottlang.net and Tim at timact at aol.com or Tim at attitude concept. Um, uh, is it .com or .org, Tim? Dot .com. com. Yeah, that's what I thought, .com. Um, and uh, with that, I'm going to exit this space, and I'm going to open up the chat room, and we are going to have an opportunity to talk to one another. So I am opening up the chat room, and if you have a question, uh, now is the time to share that question, and we are going to uh, do that. So if you're in the chat room right now and you have a question for Dr. Tim or Dr. Uh, not Dr. Scott, no, that's not true, um, uh, but uh, share that with us now by putting in the chat room. If you have some feedback, we'll take that as well. Anybody have any questions? I'm scrolling through the literally, Tim. There's over 3,000 comments at this point. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it is. It's just volume about the people listening. Does anybody have any suggestions for reaching the kids that don't have access to technology? Uh, Tim, you're not a technophile, as you say, although I think you're, you're sleeping on this a little bit. Um, you know, I mean, he used his dial-up modem to, you know, to dial in today, and he sent out some smoke signals with the URL. But Tim, uh, thoughts on connecting? Um, someone said grants for hi-fi watt spots or go to your local uh, place that has. Tim, uh, thoughts on connecting for folks who don't have that? They haven't shut down the postal service yet. <laughs> <laughs> One sentence on a card to a parent or a child, they'll keep the card forever. You know, it's worth it. We got enough band budget, we can get some stamps on that one. Gosh, that's, you're right, you'll keep it forever. I have a happy file. I, I stole that from Robert Oldjump. And uh, I have everything that a kid ever sent me. And it's, it means the world. I need to dig. I'm going to dig it out today. There you go. <laughs> um, not to be self-serving, someone said, asked about my leadership course. If you go to leaderoftheband.org, um, or, or maybe it's leader, leaderoftheband.com, uh, it's not a band thing. It's just the URL. Uh, we have a free online leadership course for band, choir, and orchestra for anyone literally from seventh grade on up. And we opened it up on Monday for free. We have over 1,000 students in four days that are in it. That's leaderoftheband.com. Course one is uh, teaching and training, and course two is um, team building and time spending. And so you can uh, check hey Scott. that out. Yes. Hey Scott, it's, it's actually uh, .org. Oh, thank you, Andrew. Andrew is the other half of Be Part of the Music. So thank you, Andrew. That's why you're here to catch me in my many mistakes. Uh, thank you, Andrew. I really appreciate that. Um, here's a question. Uh, I would like to do an Eric Whitaker virtual tire choir with my students. What tech do I use? So uh, be, I'm just going to reframe your thinking on that. And Tim and I talked about this. Uh, what, what he did is magical and the TED talk is unbelievable. But he also spent a lot of time and money on editing and had a lot of folks help him. So be careful not to bite off more than you can chew. Because the last thing you want to do is provide your students with another failed experiment in this time of failure. Um, so uh, just uh, keep that in mind um, uh, when you're taking anything on it. Um, so here's, um, here's a, a question uh, for your, someone just said, get to the post office now. There's going to be a run on stamps because Tim <laughs> just said so. Um, what resources could you point me to to create really cool videos of uh, the kind that have several screens and people singing their own part? Well, we're using Zoom, right, Z right, Tim? Yeah. Tim, talk about some of the resources you and your partners have that are available online for teachers that folks could use. Have a good weekend. 
I think you can almost go anywhere and people are throwing stuff up all the time and just, and just keep painting the Brooklyn bridge cause it's going to keep coming. It's there. It's there and more every hour. So if somebody said, well, I can't find anything. Well, it didn't look very hard then because it's a library that's caving in. There's an avalanche of good stuff to sort through. Yeah. So um, someone asked if we can share the slides, uh, most specifically the most important message slide. You can share anything from this. This is all free. Uh, we're not, it's just all free. Take what you need. Um, Tim, what would you say, someone asked, what is the most important thing to keep in mind during this difficult time? What would you say? To show the, the students, the administrators, and the parents that we care. To create that in their mind that there's somebody that's got their back. We're reaching out a hand for them because none of the rest of it will make any difference unless those kids know that we care. And the people that are on this webinar, there's the ones that care. So let's downshift and go down that rabbit hole. And there's, there's lots of ways to communicate. There's our, our partner band is incredible the things you can do with that app and you can have it up and running in just minutes uh, you should check that out but if you have existing channels whether it's slack or zoom or email or remind or charms or whatever those industry partners are do what you need to um to to communicate with folks um in the world uh to let them know you care tim what are your thoughts on having a virtual band rehearsal through zoom or other video conferencing apps sure somebody just put up there does tim have pants on <laughs> I do. Don't answer that, Tim. Do not answer that. Um, I would try anything. I mean, it's a, it's a, the, the neat part about this is it's a clean palette. Here's a bunch of colors. Start painting. Yeah, I'd try it. Anything. Well, and it goes back to, um, uh, to asking yourself, uh, what do I want to teach? What's the most important thing? And centering around that question first and putting first things first. Um, the other thing I, you know, Tim and I talked about, and gosh, I hate talking about, but you have to be real. Um, you have to be careful with streaming and you have to be care with, careful with digital rights and you have to be careful with copyright. So whatever you do, you just want to make sure that you reach out to the appropriate parties and secure permissions. And I, I know that all composers and even companies now are being uber giving uh, and saying, do whatever you got to do, but just make sure you do things in the right way. Not only so it doesn't bite you in the back end, but you want to model good behaviors for your kids. You don't want to model behaviors that you wouldn't want them to replicate once they um, coming once they come back into your world. Um, the other thing someone said is you have to be careful of you're dealing with minors and there's COPA. COPA is C-O-P-P-A, Child Online Protection and Privacy Act, um, that anyone under the age of 13 requires parental permission um, to, uh, to be online. And whether you're doing it informally or formally, you are still an employee of the district and need to be mindful of those things. Um, how about having students play their parts on a metronome and having and then pass it along to someone else? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I just want to say, uh, to finish that last thing, you've got NAFME, you've got NAM. These are sources that you can go to to just keep bringing more material in. Um, go ahead. I know. Tim, I just got to say, I, I did say, I'm way behind you and it says, does Tim have pants on? But the, the quote of the day the quote of the day is the next one that says, does he need to? <laughs> Katie Brown, oh! <laughs> Katie Brown, um, whoever you are, that was the quote of the webinar. And I also want to point out, and frankly, I'm a little disturbed and frustrated that no one has asked about my pants situation. <laughs> Clearly, they're not interested in what I'm wearing. You know what, Scott? We need to laugh, don't we? This is the time when we need to laugh and know that we're all in this together. It feels good. Uh, someone said, um, well, quick, Tim, what's the question you're getting most from teachers? Because your phone and email's got to be blowing up. What are you hearing most? What should we do? Where should we turn? Uh, and, and there's no answer because we've never had this problem before. So, do you know, Nike had it right. Just do it. Do something. But don't let communication break down, whatever you do. We have, even if you're saying, I'm putting something together for you, let them know you are there. You know, that's an anchor for so many of those kids. And you all know that's watching this. You, in many cases, are their parent. 
because they don't have one at home. So they come to you. You need to reach out always. Uh, some, you, know, you said something years ago, and it's obviously the impact you've had on me is profound because I can remember everything you've ever said, just like everyone else. You, one of your big sayings is, um, it's not the message, it's the messenger. Oh, yeah. And so it's not what you send to the kid and the parents, it's the fact that you sent something to the kid and the parents. Um, someone wrote, this, this is a great time to encourage your students to become composers and write their own music. They can create backbeats in an Apple app and play a melody with it, uh, and then slowly share it with their friends to build an ensemble. I absolutely love that idea. Scale and rhythm chunks. I love that idea. Someone asked if I have pants. Thank you, Chris Roberts. <laughs> I appreciate that. And by the way, this is a judgment-free zone and a safe space, and yes, I am in fact wearing pants. My dog, however, who's sleeping underneath my feet, buck naked people, buck naked, not wearing a darn thing and doesn't give a rat's butt about any of you, to be perfectly clear about that. Tim, what are your dogs? Tell everyone about your dogs. Oh, we got lots of them. We rescue any dog that can breathe. Uh, let's go back to message and messenger for just a second. Okay. I remember the time I gave her a dozen roses and the, you know, I had them sent from the, the florist and then there was the time I picked daisies and handed them to her myself. The daisies got far more attention than the roses because it was sourced by a messenger, somebody they loved. So, you know, it's not the slick car. It's the one they want to ride in that counts. Well, someone said, uh, so true. Uh, you have made me laugh several times during this webinar. And that was part of our plan was we want to get to leave with hope and inspiration. We didn't want you to leave with mope and desperation because how can you provide fuel for your students if someone isn't providing fuel uh, for you? And uh, Tim, I know that you provide uh, fuel for me and for everyone else out there and to you and all the industry partners that support you so that you're able to do this for us. We want to uh, thank you. Um, I'm going to hang on uh, in the chat room uh, to answer more questions uh, to anyone else. Um, and uh, Tim, I know you've got uh, meetings to attend to and a pile of emails. So we're going to uh, collectively thank you for uh, everything you did today and beyond. And you know how to reach Tim. Tim, why don't you give me another run at the best way to communicate with you? Um, email is tim at attitudeconcepts.com or tim uh, act, A-C-T at AOL.com. Um, I'm serious. I, an I answer spam. I'm so desperate for friends. So send me something, you'll get something back. I promise. And uh, I, I the same. I've never left an email unresponded to and I never will because if you talk to my face, I respond to you. And if you talk to me electronically, I respond to you. Uh, with that being said, we'll leave the chat room open for just a little bit. Um, but we're going to end the video portion of this webinar um, and know that that doesn't end our relationship here. We may be back again with another one in a little bit. Uh, we'll be with you electronically at bpotm.org. We will share with you a professional development certificate. You'll get the slide deck and then we'll have you registered and can continue to communicate moving forward. And then once you get the recording of this, please share with other people um, so that we can continue to spread good words and good people. And last but not least, we hope this provided real solutions to real problems in real time. This was Think Different. Yeah. Can I interrupt? Yeah, of course. It's your webinar. Thank you. You're the one that put it together. You're the one that, that set the stage. And we all got to jump up and be heroes on the stage. Thank you. You're welcome. And, you know, I'll share this and it's on the personal side and then we're going to end it. But uh, Tim and I are in this boat together. We swim in some of the same waters, although I swim in small ponds and he swims in big oceans. But we're scared too. Sure. We're scared too, right, Tim? Yep, yep, yep. The only way we can get out is to lock arms. So let's do it. All right. Never truer words said by a truer man and a truer support of music education. Take care, everyone. Thank you for attending. Think different going from COVID zero to COVID here. We will leave the chat box on, but this concludes the video portion of our webinar. Take care, God bless, and have a great one, everyone.